So I'm going to talk about the automated finite temperature calculation in Airbnb uh, with TDAP linked as a library. So here we'll talk about the other TDAP, the TDAP made by Hula. And in fact, the TDAP made by Hula, the, the, the main difference between the two implementations is that it's a bit more advanced in the process of developing and it already has the capability of uh, computing the thermal conductivity, the phonon lifetimes, and uh, for example, also the temperature dependent elastic constant, which is not yet possible in, uh, in the Abinet TDEP. Not yet. Uh, so the, the idea between do, do those two codes are exactly the same. It's a mean square, least square um, minimization between uh, two forces the forces from a model that takes into account the second order force constant, the third order force constant, force order, etc. And some forces that comes from DFT calculations. So in the previous presentation, uh, Francois told us that he was using molecular dynamics to get those forces, th those DFT forces. But there is another way. And the other way implemented in the code of Hula is to do some configurations. Configurations is, uh, so you take some phonons. So usually the phonons that you take here comes from, for example, DFPT, or for a Dubai model if you don't have, uh, if you didn't do the DFPT yet. And you populate the modes here you populate the modes with a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution or a Bose Einstein distribution. And it will give some, uh, some supercell where the atoms are distorted. And uh, when you do the DFT calculation of those configurations, it will give you some forces, some forces that you will input into TDEP, and that will be your training set to fit the force cause the second order and third order force constants. So the thing is that here the uh, the phonon frequencies are renormalized with the temperature. So it means that the starting force constants that you're using and the static phonons that you're using to populate the phonons here do not represent exactly the dynamics of your system at a certain temperature. And what you really want is to reproduce the dynamic of your system at a certain temp temperature to have the properties, the finite temperature properties, at that temperature. So the thing is that we will uh, we'll have to update this force constant, this, uh, uh, this uh, phonons, to, to get the right phonon at the right, the, to get the right renormalized phonon at a certain temperature to get the right dynamics, to, to get the right dynamics, yeah. So the idea is to calculate a few configurations to input it into TDEP. And a question is, how much configurations do you need for the force constant, the fit, to be converged? So. Uh, what I'm using as a parameter of convergence is the free energy. So you see that the free energy is the sum over all the frequencies. So we can approximately say that if all the, uh, the, the frequencies, the, fr the phonon frequencies are converged, then our parameter here, the free energy, will be as well converged. So I did an interface between Abinit and TDEP, where TDEP is constructed as a library, and I'm calling from Abinit, I'm calling the TDEP library to calculate some configurations. So calculate the, uh, the distorted supercells, and then I calculate it with Abinit. It gives me forces. And then uh, all the forces, I put it in uh, 
the I, I call some library uh, some Tdep uh, uh, routines, and it gives me some it do it do the fit for me. It gives me some false constants, and then I can check the convergence of the false constants with respect to the number of conf configurations that I did. And also, I can update, iteratively, I can update the false constants to recreate new configurations with new false constants, updated false constants, that represent better the dynamics at a certain temperature. So the idea is here, it's also a, an automated process where the user uh, just have an input file and maybe also a DDB, DDB file to start the calculation. And then there is an initialization process where I calculate the first configurations and then Abinit, uh, Abinit do the, uh, well, uh, calculate the ground state of the first configuration, the few first configurations, and then it, it extracts some false constants. When it, ex it extracts some false constants, it can calculate the free energy. There is a check to see if the free energy is converged. If it's not, it uses the newly um, calculated false constants to recreate some new configuration and recalculate the ground state of this new configuration and adding it to the number of configurations to, to fit the false constants. And then uh, when the convergence is done, then uh, I can uh, output the second and third order false constants the, that should be converged with respect to the number of configurations that I have. And that should really uh, represent the dynamics at a certain temperature. So I wanted to show you an example of the importance of updating the, the, the false constants and updating the model that you're using to create the configurations. I did a test case on Niobium Selenite 2, which is a TMD material with a charge and density wave. What does it mean is that at 0K, it's unstable. If you do a, DFT, a DFET calculation on that, it's unstable at 0 Kelvin. And then when you heat up, uh, it becomes stable, stable with respect to the hexagonal symmetry that you can see here. The, the transition temperature should be 36K. So I did two calculations. One, I started from a Dubai model. So Dubai model is a really crude model to get some false constants based on only the nature of the, the, uh, of the atoms. And I didn't update the, the false constants throughout the, the process, and I calculated the same amount of uh, configurations here and here, which is approximately 30 configurations. In the case where uh, I didn't update the false constant, you can see that we, ca we can still see some unstable modes, which is not really physical, because at 300K, the structure should be stable. But uh, if I start from DFPT, which is still, which has still some unstable phonons, and I'm, I'm updating the false constants at each step, then at the end of my 30 configurations, of the calculation of my 30 configurations, I get some uh, stable phonons, which represent here the real physical uh, uh, reality. And then I had a short presentation. I'm all, almost on time, so I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for your attention, and if you have questions, go ahead.